So let's get into this topic, right? The obvious thing to start with is Cloud9 to me, because let's talk about when they did have LS, what they were doing, what's going on with the roster. Obviously, we can speculate about what might happen after this. Right, Kira, what did you actually think? I know you're someone, uh, listen, if people don't know, both these guys are on my Discord server. Spoiler, if you're a random moron, don't even join. You won't, you won't make it through. You won't, you won't last a week. But if you're cool, you can come. Basically, on my Discord server, people, most people there, I'm going to assume, are at a minimum, like, LS adjacent. They must at least be interested in the guy's content because it, has, it is so adjacent to my content. It has so many overlaps in terms of, obviously, like, the joke is people used to, I know this might sound implausible now, but years and years ago, people used to hate it when LS gave all these analogies to trading card games, Street Fighter things. Now everyone loves it because they've realised it's his thing in it, it's his shtick. It's like it's his own unique approach to doing it, and it's a way to sort of get into his thinking. So, right, I'm assuming you guys in general, Kira, if we start with you, I'm assuming you were you were interested in this approach. You want to see what LS would be like in Cloud Nine, right? Oh, massively so. And the, the, some of the players that he like brought over, I was like specifically like interested in. Like um, I, I like knew had a lot of respect for Summit as a player, but specifically the ADC player Berserker. I've been watching him in solo queue and then like LCK amateur with the um junior squad. Uh, and this guy is a really, in my opinion, is a really really special player, and I was okay. so happy to see because um, for me. This guy is like, this is this massive steal that C9 will be able to basically get this like talent and take it away from like the Korean system. I think. To what extent really, then? Okay, if you've actually watched him, then get, expand on that a little bit. Like, give me an analogy. Because the premise I have is this, right? So in the same way as I used to tell people back in the day, they should just hire basically people who are my friends who watch all the ERLs in Europe and they could just get it. Basically, the joke would be, if the next Caps is out there, they'll just get you in before he gets to a Fnatic or a G2. Who would this guy be if he'd have been an LTK? Like, would he actually have been like a star ADC, do you think? Yeah, the, this guy, the, the crazy thing is, is the, the, actual, the player that he's like is Guma. But he's, oh, like okay. a, he's like another version of Guma. He's probably less slightly because Guma is just like such a like outlier. But he's like the next human being to that outlier. Right. He has a very, very similar play style, very similar champion proficiencies of like Aphelios, Jinx, Hyper Carry, Specialist. He has like a couple of like very small like pocket picks. Like I'm pretty sure he used to be like a Yasuo bot, like a like player, things like this. Um, but he's got very, he's very, very, very skilled, like mechanically. He's got, he's got the very like traditional, like st- Teddy style, ruler style, like very efficient, like movement, like very focused on his own survivability. He's a guy that you can give loads and loads of resources to. And even though he's a very, very young person, he's very responsible with the goal that you input into him. And it's a really, really great thing to see. It's a hallmark of like the traditional uh, LCK Korean style AD series and the likes of Death, Teddy, those type of players. And I think this guy potentially could be within that lineage. And I think C9 have done an amazing job stealing this guy away because this guy, um, for me, should have been the damn one replacement for Ghost right. or something like that. And the idea that this guy isn't going to be native to the Korean system and like they've managed to pull this person away. This is like when they went and got like incarnation from like Europe and stuff well they've done this to Korea this guy should have yes. been someday within the Korean system and now he's going to hopefully come up through the Cloud9 system yeah, yep. people don't know, this actually is, funnily enough, the opposite version of what I once made a video about. I mean, famously now, it's like an infamous video because the fucking idiot Reddit mod fuckers just, like, removed it because it was racist or whatever. Where, because I used the analogy, the Underground Railroad, well, apparently you can't use analogies and metaphors in their world. You can, of course, still on this video, can't do fucking shit about it. But basically, my premise, if you remember, when he was on that LCK Challenger team, where it was the BBQ Olivers, the reason I found that interesting was the opposite way around. I thought to myself... He's inevitably going to find someone who he thinks is some sick Western and actually bring him into a Korean team. Like, we'll see him in LCK one day. Obviously, now, that is obviously part of the appeal of when he was in Cloud9. We might get the opposite. The joke is he might actually get the next Korean talent. So it's cool that you, you're implying he did, basically. What do you have... Like, in, in general, uh, Yasuke, as I bring you in now, what we'll do in this is... I don't really want to make that much of it about, like, the LS firing and what's that mean? Because that's what every show's been about and everyone's mm-hmm. talked at the death and we still don't have any details, quite frankly. And I'll say this, the reports I have from behind the scenes are so conflicted and all over the place mate like there's no real obvious track on this one I'd rather talk about the actual team like what they were doing under LS mm-hmm. what you thought of the line so give me some of your thoughts on this Cloud9 lineup yep so to just kind of piggyback off of the point of talking about Berserker uh, I believe that Gumayushi 
train, trained Berserker and was afraid that he would take his spot because he also believed that Berserker was the second best AD carry in Korea. And overall with um, Cloud9, I feel like it's there's so much potential in this team. Like they have so much raw talent and the it, just the tragedy of LS leaving is that there's so much of these young players or players who are in new roles or volatile pieces. I think the only real stable piece on this team is Summit at a high level. And aside from that, that it, it's going to be a really hard thing to say about whether or not they're actually going to be able to um, get everything set up properly with all of these rookies, with all of these people in new roles into the future. Because, I will say, yeah, mm -hmm. go on. Yep, because there's a lot of people that are still in Cloud9 who have the LS ideas. There's still people who are part of the church. But the problem is, is that if there's not a commanding presence there to actually hyper-enforce that, which you would have gotten with LS, I don't necessarily know if those ideas are going to stick as easily as playing more meta, easy ways and not taking the risks for development that would be needed. Right, when we talk about the topic, by the way, we can all take whatever angles we want and just jump in and out or wherever. As long as people are responsible, I trust that you, you know what you talk about. What I would say is this. The first main concern I have about this roster right now is I also think that... It, I actually think the roster ended up looking better in its initial games than it probably is. Because, you know, they were all emphasising how LS wanted to do all the things that, funnily enough, you would talk about when you're not actually the coach. Like, well, if it was me, you know, I'd pull out this draft no one's seen before or I'd play champions in roles you don't expect them from based on solo queue or scrims. Like, they clearly were doing that a lot in these initial games to, like, test LS's theory. But I also think if you look at the roster composition, I think it probably actually helped the team. Because if you're trying things out the opponent's never seen before... He doesn't have the answers as to how to beat that. It's not obvious. It's not streamlined as to what he does in response. So if you're working with a team with a bunch of Korean players who maybe don't have the best English, Blabber, who's in a totally different environment of players, Fudge, Roll, Swap to Mid, like actually, as long as your team essentially know what they're going to do, you can actually sort of get like a, a very short-term advantage in some of those games. So my worry is this. Even though, as you say, there are still enough people in the org, they might like put some of LS's ideas into the team. At the end of the day, none of those people are LS. Like those people, a lot of them are just in the coaching circles of the normal world of like after this by the way they'll want another job at a different team and they'll want to keep going for years so unfortunately the others i can't trust as well will actually stick to this like i've get the feeling you know if it's week six of the season and you need to win this game you just do a boring meta draft and you just win it you know i don't really know that they're there L um, ls doing this almost was just to make a point like he, he wasn't doing it just for the money or to think it was the best team in the world he was doing it to to actually sort of put in practice all these theories and things he's come up with so that's why to me it has like sort of sapped a little bit of my interest like i don't think the raw lineup these five players is going to be as good personally without i don't think so either i really really hope though that like ls is like presence there even within the region because it's na i've got like less hope of this but hopefully there's like maybe like a like you know what i mean like a, a bit of them stays with it like other teams maybe not just c9 can maybe look at some of the things they were doing and like you know make continuations of them not even if it's just uh a basic oh sorry a fundamental ls looking thing but stuff like you know the enchanters mid like loads of teams can have their mid player be like you know what man go throw 15 games at soraka you know what i mean try out this ivern thing look at some of the, like the hallmark like stuff that this c9 squad was trying to do and you maybe see cause i think i think i think it was peter dunn said that actually a lot of the ls's scrims that he had with them were really invaluable that they're like the scrim quality with c9 was really really high because ls exposed people to so many like strategies like one after another that like he, he was a very very good like scrim partner because you were actually like learning a lot it wasn't just like the same like renekton top draft a jungler, tank jungler draft, tempo jungler draft, control mage mid, you were like three, four maybe strategies and you were actually getting a bit of depth, a bit of learning. I, I could see a world in which a lot of teams would cancel the scrim right after champion select if it was anybody but LS trying these drafts, uh, like in the past, because they're, they're just going to say, we're never going to play against this on stage. This isn't going to be good practice for us. Mm. Sure. sure. Definitely. I'll also say as well, there's the other part that is sad to me, is I know people are going to think I'm just saying this because I'm his friend or whatever, I'll support him. Genuinely, I actually think this was the only person in all of League of Legends I'm aware of in the West who actually has even like the goal, if you think about how they think about the game, to be ahead of everyone else. 
Like everyone else, the joke is, I always make this point and it just flies over people's heads. Even my favourite people who are experts in league, all the people I have on my shows, typically what they're doing is they're just, they're like the equivalent of like an, a historian who found like an ancient fucking pot in like Greece. They're just trying to decipher it and go like, oh, what was it? And what were they trying to do? All they're trying to do with the LPL and LCK better is that. Figure out what are they doing and why are they doing it? In fact, a lot of them even by default have the mentality that once they decipher what those Asian teams are doing, it must by default fact by default be the best thing that's e that's what they're going in with a baked mm -hmm. in assumption ls wasn't going to do that i mean people already saw it from his commentary and his analysis so to me the really exciting thing was we'll never know now because it was only two weeks but there's a world where he maybe could have actually for real like stumbled on the next big innovation or found something that like you could have been weeks or a month ahead of potentially even the best asian teams and so the reason why that's so exciting to me is it's the reason why i used to love fucking draft when g2 2019 played because it was the one time I've ever seen in the modern day, like forget Moscow 5, it's like 2012 for fuck's sake. In the modern day, it's the only time I ever saw in the draft the fucking best Asian team look like the one who was on the hot seat going like, what the fuck's coming next? Like, what, what the hell? Like, they looked like the ones that were uncomfortable. I've had to watch like, at that point in time, like six or seven years of every Western team. Like, they're always losing in the draft. They're always the ones that get tricked by the other pick. Their picks are obvious and get destroyed. Like, LS could actually have brought that back again, almost like that vibe that G2 had because we've noticed no the team can really do what G2 did because they don't have the same special players so to me this was the only other kind of secret sauce guy that we were working with in the scene so I think it's tragic and then also I can't even have one playoff run not even one playoff series mm -hmm. I can't even see what like a real playoff draft would look like because forget the lock-in it didn't have enough good tape players I wanted to see a real playoff series where you know like his team's down one to two and then he pulls out some god tier draft that he's been saving the whole time so sadly we'll never get any of that stuff on the rest of the roster though thoughts on some of the other players like i've got a question for you kira i know a lot of the emphasis when he left the team ls was like what my assumption was when he joined which is like surely of all the five players blabber's going to be the one that's going to be this guy's problem child like it doesn't seem at all like an ls jungler like he obviously has i mean let's just be real just some of the ints alone like if ls had been cast in that game two years ago he'd go mental with some of these but I noticed he sort of went out of his way when he left to sort of imply like he really respected him and all that jazz. I don't really buy that much myself, but what did you actually think when they were playing in the game, Kieran? Did it, did it seem like he meshed with Blabber or what, how do you think he was trying to use him contrasted with past Blabber teams you've seen? You know what? I'll give, I'm a bit of a Blabber hater, right? But I'll give this guy his dues. Of all the players, I thought this guy was going to fuck everything up for like the LS like system that they were looking to play, but it actually wasn't him. I think Summit looked more disjointed to their like playstyle and his like champion pool and like what his like comfort picks was. When I actually look at like Blabber, Bla I think Blabber was doing like loads of like stuff that were like hallmarks of like LS like things that like just like stat checking people. I thought we were just like walking like the famous when he was on the Olaf into the Victor. It was just like stat checking him every single time with the Enchanter. And it wasn't like, oh, we'll do it once. It's like, no, like when the guy came back, he's done it again. And he came back and he's done it again because, and it looked like the guy like understood, like, yeah, I've got these heals, I've got these strengths. I think it, apart from the Karthus game, which was just a real, very, very, like an overall very bad game for Blabber, I was really surprised with how he'd done the system. If you look at the team and you look at the jungle, of the teams we're going to talk about today, C9 are like one of the teams that I really respected because they didn't really have like the mind-numbing Drake priority where they have to like show up at every Drake and stare at it being taken and bleed gold all over the map, right? C9 yes. didn't buy into that shit. C9 were like, you know what? You take the first two Drakes. They're garbage. But you know what? See the third or fourth one, we're coming with people that are farmed. We've got an extra item than you. We've got like better map position than you. And they were very happy to just show up at the Drake team fights with item advantages and gold advantages and beat people. And some of that is dependent on your jungler because you know your jungler fundamentally has to go to the Drake to take it. He's the most important person there. And Blabber wasn't falling into these pitfalls. So there had to, for, in my opinion, from what I've seen, there has to be some belief and buy-in from the system because the guy wasn't just like ending at Drake's or just randomly showing up at Drake's and trying to flash walls. Like he was doing the things, farming the camps, creating a lot of the excess gold leads when people were on Enchanters. I've got to say, I respect it because yeah, there was a lot more buy-in there than I thought. Blabber, I don't think that Cloud9 was ever going to get rid of him. Uh, LS might have wanted to maybe get another jungler if maybe Santorin was available or something. That might have been a better fit for Seems the Seems like a good fit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, 
L uh, the LS Cloud9 iteration was playing very well around Blabber's upsides. Having Enchanter mids and a carry jungle, like that played really well into that aspect of Blabber's play, while also being able to reel in like the random ints from a team-wide aspect. Like not giving Blabber the situation to where he would do something crazy because they already have such a clear win condition that I believe that they used Blabber just really, really well. The one thing I will say is this as well, because a lot of, like, as I said, let's be real, like, most of the attention on Cloud9 was just LS. Every, it was every road leads to Rome. Like, it was how does Baba play under LS? How does Fudge play as a roll top mid under LS? How does Summit play? Because LS always thought he was great. So the one player I always thought was completely, um, I don't even, I still don't really even know why he's on this roster, aside from import aspects, is the fucking winsome guy. Like, I still don't even really know, like, what the deal is with this player. Like, this is the, if I had to pick the player where it's like, Maybe LS sees something, but now that we're, we're just a normal team again, who is this guy? For what I was able to garner from like the research that I'd done from him, he's like, and so maybe I've, LS probably has a different reader on him. This is the guy that really made no sense. Like, this guy is like a Korean, but he's like an LPL engaged support specialist. When I went okay. and checked his games, this guy just plays like tons of engaged support. He's very good at Thresh. Uh, so, like, you know, that's, like, a big prop right now. Th like, Thresh-based ADC systems are really popular. So, you know, if you can get... And Thresh likes the first pick. Uh, Ellis likes the first pick, Thresh. But this guy was playing, like, Leona, Alistair. He, this guy, like, basically, uh, 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 Rel. Like, you think of all the engaged supports that are infamous from the LPL. This guy played them. And this guy played them super aggro. So, I was kind of surprised with his, with his pick-up once I had a look at his gameplay. But, yeah... That's it's good. also it's also that he's not an import, so you would have to compare him to domestic players. And yes, like, are there going to be any other domestic players that you could get? And since you also have the kind of culture of already having so many Koreans, even if you have a player who might be equal to Winsome, there's the idea of having the culture there, and the culture fit would be really important. Sure.